All right, as I said, so much to get involved with this evening. It's been called uh, gender inclusion policy, but swimming's governing body, FINA, has decided to exclude transgender women from competing in women's events. Now, a beacon for other sports to follow or a dark path to discrimination? Discuss. Robert Craddock, thoughts? Oh, look, my thoughts on this, very complex issue, and I think the goalposts will change, but uh, was shaped by a conversation with transgender cricket writer, uh, Kate McGregor, uh, five years ago, and, and Kate said to me, she said, I will back the transgender movement for equality all the way up the line until it gets to strength sports. And the trouble is, if you go into uh, to that area which is a little bit unfair, you lose your ground and everything else. Like she said, it ruins the whole argument. That's why I think it's actually, it could be a plus for the transgender movement, but I fully accept, Caitlin, it's a very sensitive issue. And as Kieran Perkins said today, the problem is what does no justice to this argument at all is the extremes of it, out here and out here. They're, 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 they're butting heads and pulling it in different directions, but the truth is probably in the middle. Yeah, it's, it's a really touchy one. Um, as a female athlete, um, I just want to protect female sport with everything that I have because we've fought so hard to get it to the stage where it is now. And, and you think about, um, you know, comparing male and female athletes, and this just really muddies the water. There's, there's so much grey there. Um, I, I'm just really happy that Kate Campbell spoke out. I think she's an amazing ambassador and, and no one could have said it better, but it, um, it's really tough. Well, let, let's hear from her because, as you say, Australian swimming star Kate was. She impresses as an athlete and a statesperson. Here's part of her speech to FINA members in Budapest. Now, usually inclusion and fairness go hand in hand. To create a place that is inclusive is to create a space that is fair. Transgender, gender diverse, and non-binary athletes' inclusion in the female category of elite sport is one of the few occasions where these principles come into conflict. Usually they are terms of absolutes which work together, yet science now tells us that in this issue they are incompatible. She does. She speaks very well uh, and often gets it right and balanced. Oh, very much so. Look, I haven't got a human rights legal or scientific background but I believe in the great Australian expression, give her a fair go. And if a biological male opposes a biological female in sport, it's not giving her a fair go. Mm. And that is the bottom but line. They're, not bi they're no longer biologically male, though, by the time they go through the hormone, all the, everything they have to go through to change them so that, they, in fact, they're not. Well, I, I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Look, I got, how many elite athletes are there who are trans? None. Very, very few. In swimming, it's swimming, about zero. It's, it's yeah. zero. Why is it such a, a blanket decision saying it's a no-go rather than doing it on a case-by-case -case basis? Why is there a whole range of kids who might be in a schoolyard right now who are transitioning, not because they want to win an Olympic medal, but it's because who they are and they want their body to catch up? Mm -hmm. Why do they have to feel like they are still the other? Because FINA is saying they're going to have an event basically another category. Now, is this a ninth lane where you get put somebody in yep. there? That, that is not a great thing. No, and I just can't imagine it happening because the sample base is so small. Look, it, it, it's a good point you make, but I think that on the balance, the, the, the science says that when a, a male becomes a female, they do take over certain strengths that doesn't make it fair. And that's what Kate's saying. The cornerstone of everything. Inclusion is wonderful, but fairness means more. It, Tony, I do think it'll change, and I really respect your argument here, and I know you feel even deeper about it than what you're letting on, and, and that, that's a good point. It's complex, but I thought they showed a lot of courage. Is the catalyst in terms of the swimming Leah Thomas, the American swimmer you, you will probably have heard of, who has, as a male performer, was, well, pedestrian's probably an ugly word, but since transitioning is performing very well amongst the women. Well, she wants to go to the Paris Olympics yeah. and this has spurred swimming into action. They do not want a drama at the Olympic Games. They want everything sorted for, for better or for worse beforehand. And they would rather the debate happen now in Olympic year and I get that. Gee, it's going to be interesting to see what's going to happen. I was most interested, Caitlin, in Sebastian Coe's comments in charge of World Athletics. It was almost as if he was a man who had seen a boil lanced and thought, someone else has done it, we will be following in due course. Did you get that impression? Yeah, I think, um, to what you were saying before, Tony, it, 
it's like a precedent. Once it starts in one sport, does that mean other sports follow suit? Mm. And so that is, you know, FINA, are they starting the, the slippery slope that other sports now have to follow suit? I think case by case would be interesting, but I think that then opens precedent it's for everyone. It's serious now, though. The discussions mm. are serious. And listen to the way that, you know, listening to everyone talk here tonight about it. We've had discussions in the past about transgender athletes, but not to this level now. So I agree. Decisions have been made by FINA. Decisions will be made by other associations. But they'll evolve, Crash. I'm with you. The more we learn, the more we understand, the more parameters that are exposed, yeah. then I think decisions will change. I totally agree, because I'm not convinced that the science that they use so far is the ultimate science that they're going to use. And that is, there are, you know, there's some that say there is different science, mm. like climate change, really, I, I guess. <coughs> the International Rugby League has also yes. gone down the same path. They have today, and... Uh, that, that was a move in place before this, but announced after it. And I know they were terribly relieved when swimming announced theirs because they snuck through their own policy. And there will be more to come, I'm sure. Yeah.